grace and peace to each of you this morning. We welcome all of you to the service of worship and invite everyone to uh, fill out the friendship register and then pass it to those seated in the pews next to you that we may have record of everyone's attendance. This is Veterans Day and we are going to be celebrating and recognizing our veterans in an important way throughout the service this morning. But I would like to call your attention. You'll notice after the middle hymn, we're going to have a recognition at that point and a roll call. You will find in the insert a list of 46 veterans who are still living, members of this church or connected with this church. And we will be calling each of their names. If you hear your name called, if you will stand, and then give the branch of service you served and the year served, then we will continue to move through our list. But uh, throughout the service this morning, uh, this being the 100th year of the ending of World War I and the armistice going into effect at 11 a.m. on November 11th, 1918. So when we chime this morning, rather than three chimes of the Trinity, we are chiming 11 chimes to reflect and remember that we have now gone 100 years since the end of the war to end our wars. And we are still grateful for our veterans who continue to serve on our behalf. You'll note also that tomorrow there will be a luncheon of the Presbyterian women, and we will be hearing a brief announcement about that in just a moment. Uh, but also tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., the officer training will continue. Bible study will happen on Wednesday, and we are now looking at the theme of sin and its impact on human life. And we'll be doing that in, in our Bible study. Men of the church. All men are encouraged to come to the breakfast and Bible study this Saturday at 8.30 uh, upstairs. And then, if you would, uh, would like, we are going to go to the garden afterwards to do some work in the garden. But we encourage all men to come first to the breakfast, and then we'll do our work together. Christmas stocking and angel tree gifts are available back in the narthex, Catherine is back there and receiving. If you haven't yet signed up, we have about, we started with about 50 some and we still have about 20 or so names for people to take for the Christmas uh, angel tree offering and, and a number more for the stockings and we're needing volunteers for both. Next Sunday, uh, the worship committee will meet at 1.30 rather than this Sunday. And then at 4 p.m. next Sunday, the SNF committee, Stewardship and Finance Committee, will meet at 4. If you have not yet done so, please, we ask you to remember to turn in your pledge card so that we can begin uh, to develop that budget and put the finishing touches on it. Actually, it's been in work for a while, so please bring your pledges in. The Thanksgiving service uh, will be next Sunday evening. This is a community-wide service involving all the churches of our community that are involved in the Ministerial Association. There are seven churches now that are involved, and we encourage all of you to come out to that. It will be at First Christian Church, so if you are driving in from the east side of town and you pass All Ray, if you look up on the hill, there's a little round church up there on top of the hill. That is First Christian Church and the location where we'll be for our service next week. Christmas uh, reads. Our youth are making reads for people who would like to purchase them, and there's an order form in your bulletin this morning. This is a major fundraiser for our youth, and we encourage you all to... Uh, be supportive of the youth, uh, put a wreath on your door that's freshly made by our own youth, and uh, they will uh, be working to make those very soon. Jet Set uh, will be going this week on Thursday to the Christmas show. I believe it's 9 a.m., is that right? 9 a.m. when they go? Okay, it is. All right. Now I would like
would like to call Jason forward uh, for a minute for mission on the uh, blessing box. Jason, did you get the word on that? didn't happen here really well for Jason, but uh, and that's okay. to do it okay. Right, right. Uh, what an exciting project has, has come to fruition out of our diaconate. Uh, we have got a, a food box outside just, just where the horseshoe is uh, as you go into the lower level of our education building. And that box is there for folks in our community who don't have the next meal that they may need. Believe it or not, those people are here in Valdez. And so our people have, have come together, created, constructed, painted, and stocked a blessing box on our campus uh, that as the community becomes familiar with it, they can come through the horseshoe, get their next meal, and be, be thankful to God uh, for our presence here in their community. So I'm proud of that project. Thank you guys if you're out there for making that happen. And take a look at that box. It's one more step that we take in being the body of Christ here serving our community. And along with that, at 5 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon, if you would like, we encourage all of you to come out. We're going to have a dedication of that blessing box at the blessing box. Again, it's in the horseshoe very next to the entrance there, and we will have that dedication so our children and adults can join in together for that event. 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Now, Laura Martinot, if you would come forward and share a word. Yeah, if you come to the microphone, people need. Thank you. I am here this morning on behalf of the women of our church, and Kevin has already told you about our lunch from tomorrow. That is for all the women of the church. And we would love to see so many of you here tomorrow at 12 o'clock for a delicious lunch prepared by our own Cheryl Townsend. And while you're here, we hope you will meet the circle groups if you've not already met them and think about joining one of those groups. Uh, it, it's a, the best known secret in this church what the Presbyterian women do. Um, but if they are a hard-working group of women and a loving group of women, we'd love to have you join us. And the second thing is to bring attention to one of those many items stuffed inside your bulletin, and that's this little blue envelope. We have two special offerings each year that we uh, receive gifts for. One is, of course, our thanks, thank offering and then our birthday offering in May. These are gifts that are offered by Presbyterian women around the world and recipients of, of these uh, monies are local uh, groups uh, such as the, the Blessing Box um, and types of ministries like that, but, but gifts all around the world. And this year, our own Western North Carolina Presbytery women will be the recipient of one of those, one of those gifts. So we're happy to have a recipient so close to us. So if you can make a small donation to that offering, it would be most uh, gratefully appreciated. Thank you. Let us worship God.
beautiful. We are called to gather in this sanctuary made by human hands and toil. We come in to be strengthened and empowered to go into the world. Friends, is saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel, for in Jesus Christ we are all forgiven. Amen. <laughs>
this is for? It is kind of like a pot. What do you put in it? Money. That's right. And I know that you guys aren't normally in here for this part of the service, but there's a part during each worship service where we pass. This is called the offering plate. And we pass it around and people put money in it. And that money is used for our church programs and it's used to help needy people in our community and in our world. So since y'all don't normally get to see this, I asked Emma and Lila if they would kind of help me demonstrate how this works. So I'm going to pass the, the offering plate and they're going to put their money in. Hey, wait a minute. Two pennies? You think God is really going to be happy with two pennies? Because yeah. <laughs> that's all I have? Because that's all she had. Well, you know what? I think she's right. Because there's a story in the Bible about a poor widow, and she went to the temple to give her offering, and she put in just two small copper coins, kind of like these two pennies right here. See, they're not even new shiny pennies. They're just old dingy pennies and probably couldn't buy a whole lot with them. They weren't worth very much. And the rich people who were giving a lot of money, they made fun of her and they said, two pennies, that's or two small copper coins are not worth very much to the Lord. But Jesus said, no, this woman put more money in than anyone else because she gave everything that she had. It was all that she had to live on, and everyone else was just giving the extra that they didn't really need. So even though she gave just a small amount of money, she made a big sacrifice, right? And speaking of big sacrifices, today is Veterans Day, and that's a day when we honor our veterans who are people who served in the military because they made a big sacrifice by leaving their families and by risking their lives to help keep you safe. So today is a day that we want to thank them for their service to our country and for helping keep us safe and keeping us free. So I know that there's going to be a part in the service in just a little bit when um, Reverend Frederick is going to ask them to stand, but I'd actually like for them to stand now if there are any veterans who are here with us this morning so that we can tell them thank you. Are there any veterans with us this morning? One, two, three. Thank you. Very good. Let's pray. Bow your heads for me. Dear God, thank you for our veterans and for their sacrifice. Help us also to remember that everything that we have is from you, and that when we are able, we should give back to you with a cheerful heart. Amen.
States, this congregation has been very generous to our nation. If you look in your bulletin, there on the white page is a listing of those who have served and have been uh, veterans in this congregation. And we will be calling the roll now uh, to invite them to stand if they are here and identify their years of service and the branch of the military that they served in. Nolan Berry, Ed Blainon, Bob Bliss, Bart Manus. John Brackett. U.S. Dak Brinkley. Billy Britton. I will say that there are three names of individuals on our list who are veterans from World War II. Billy is one of those three. Louis Ray Burris. John Cannon. Ted Carruthers. Jim Cockerham. Curtis Foshi. Jim Furr. Army, 69 73. Louis Guru, our second vet from World War II. Roger Hebner. Barbara Hefner. Mike Hefner. Bryce Hudson. Lindy Hudson. Ben Huffman. Leroy Huffman. Emil Jackman. Jeff Jackman. Harvey Jones. Wayburn Jones. Our third vet from World War II. John Connor Lafferty, Coleman Lanning, Eddie Michael, Vic Michael, Steve Mollis. Dick Neal. Spotswood Neal. Nick Palmer. Yates Palmer. Willie Paschal. Steve Peru, Tom Rice, Jim Roston, John Roston III, Mark Sharp, Ken Stetler, Gene Tucker, Julia Underwood, John Waldrop, Richard Wisnett, and John Williams.
Please join me in the Litany for Veterans. On this day, we remember those who have served in our armed forces. Prince of Peace, even as we pray for an end to war, Healer of all, bind up the wounds of all who have served. Show us how to comfort those who are hurting. We especially have those veterans whose bodies, minds, and spirits bear the heavy loss of wars, falls, and deaths. Merciful God, all suffer the cost of war. We pray, gracious God, that swords will be turned into plowshares and that peace will bring. We give thanks for all who have served. Shield and measure those who greatly protect us. We live in the glory not in war, but in your love and righteousness. Strengthen us to be your peace in the world. Amen. As we come to our time of pastoral concerns and pastoral prayers, I will come down and join you in the congregation. Some pastoral care updates in addition to the recognition of our veterans. First, Mr. Janice Berry, who received surgery this past uh, Thursday, of, no, it was Tuesday, I guess, one of these days this week. Janice received surgery on a carotid artery, um, and Nolan was here this morning at the first service and indicated that actually the risk of, of uh, the possible throwing of a blood clot has actually increased because of the surgery for the next few days, but that she would be getting progressively better from that. But she will have uh, a constant source of headache because of the surgery for several uh, a couple of weeks now. We also want to remember John Bowles, who uh, had surgery on his prostate a couple weeks ago and got a report midweek this week that all was contained and he is doing very well with full expectation of recovery. Liv Caruso got some good news late in the week. She was originally thinking it would be the 19th before she would be able to have the port removed for the dialysis. Uh, her kidneys are fully functioning and the doctors were so encouraging to her late this week that she will have that port removed tomorrow. So it's a week ahead of time and she'll be able to go home once that's been done. Barbara Donato had surgery on her hip in New Jersey and the same night that she had just had the surgery, she learned that they discovered that her femur was fractured, so they had to go in and put a plate in her femur in, in order for her to fully recover. Now, that, all of that has been done, and she is um, already walking and making some progress. We also learned that uh, Steve Mowry, who was with us playing the organ last week, is, uh, is having some uh, cancer removed from his uh, scalp, and the concern was how deep it is and all of that, so he is having a test done as, while they remove that to determine uh, the degree of, of what's going on there. So we pray for Steve and for good test results coming back later. We learned that uh, Taylor Benoose, the grandson of Alberta, uh, has been having some heart irregularities, even for a man in his 20s. So we pray for him as he goes through that. and then. David Tucker, who is Gene Tucker's son, uh, has having uh, sinus surgery this past week and has come through that very well, and uh, they expect full recovery. The other prayer request I would lift up to us is for Tamika and Alex Garrison, who, as we speak, are worshiping with our sister church in Quatepeque, uh, Guatemala, at the Nueve Jerusalem Presbyterian Church and our brothers and sisters there. And they are great ambassadors of joy and love on behalf of this church. So we keep them in our prayers 
not only for a joyful time, but also safe travels. Are there any other pastoral concerns that any of you all know of? Yes, Mary. Okay, Louise, Lynn, Lynn, who is in Iowa, who's Mary's sister, have, still has some infection in her lungs. Is this related to cancer? No, this is not cancer. This, uh, so we keep Louise in our prayers. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. John's sister has been battling with some cancer. Okay, a brain disease. So we keep John's sister in our prayers as she battles with brain disease. Anyone else? Let us turn to God in prayer. We pause to take time to thank you. For you are the Lord of life who give, has given us the Prince of Peace that we may work towards peace in this world. We thank you for the veterans of this country who have given of their lives and their well-being, and some who gave of their lives completely for the direction and, and leadership of this country. And we ask, Lord, that you will Bless our veterans, especially those vets who are struggling with memories of a war or guilt or whatever has impacted and wounded their souls. We ask your peace. We pray for veterans who have lost limbs or lost mobility in some form or another and ask for your guiding strength to help to continue to help them to realize the joy of life, even to be claimed when our bodies are not whole. We ask, O oh God, for your blessing of healing strength to be with those individuals that we've lifted today, those who are recovering from surgeries, those who are battling cancers of various forms, and that list is longer than mentioned this morning. We ask, O oh God, that your healing strength will work with all individuals who are in the hospital or recovering from being in the hospital. And we ask also that you will bring a lasting peace in our world as we hear of yet one more great tragedy in our country of a mass shooting and we pray god that your abiding presence and peace will bring comfort to those families in california from the shooting earlier this week but we also pray for wisdom and guidance for the leaders of this nation to help us beyond this impasse and towards a time of greater peace in this country greater safety, and greater sense of harmony rather than hatred. God, we lift our lives in gratitude for all you've given us and ask your blessing to work through the ministries of this church, especially our new blessing box and the existing ministries that reach out to children and people of all ages. Strengthen us in our service to you. For we offer this prayer in the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for it. Amen.
come to our time of scripture reading, I ask you to join with me in prayer. We look to you, Lord, for something this world cannot give, an understanding of your peace and the power of your grace to renew us and make us whole. In Christ's name, now speak to us through this word. Amen. From Mark, the 12th chapter, starting with the 38th verse. As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at the banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth about a penny. Then he called the disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all, all she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. You may have already picked up on it. The scribes are introduced first, who like to walk around with long robes, sort of like this one. Scribes who want to be seated in the best seats of the synagogue and banquets, those very same scribes whose interest rates on the widows and their payment plans on her, their homes caused eviction. Now we have to understand the scribes that are being talked about are not all scribes, but specific scribes, those who are engaged in the legal practices of what they do to make sure that their nest is feathered even at the expense of the poor widows. It is those scribes whose legal experts prey on the most vulnerable. Then like a mirror, Jesus just three verses later contrasts the image with a widow who willingly gives of all of her coins. The contrast between the scribe who preys on the widows and the widow who freely gives all she had serves as a mirror image for Jesus to make a point. Jesus draws our attention between one who has much and takes more from the impoverished widows and one who has little and gives it all. The scribe is motivated by greed, the widow by gratitude, and by her dependency on God. In any way you examine this parable, this widow gives abundantly of her full measure. She gave it all, Jesus said. When the basis for giving is dependency and deep gratitude, then the monetary value of the gift really doesn't matter. Because one is given all. So her gift of the two mites redirected more of her whole self and reflected that than the more expensive gift given by the wealthy individual. Over the years, I have had numerous conversations with a number of vets in this church, particularly those who are no longer with us. In the last 10 years, there were probably 30 vets who have died who were in World War II. And many of them have considered their service to this country as paying back a debt owed with gratitude. I'm framing this, this sermon from that perspective. Many vets would tell you that going to war pushed them to grow up fast. But those who served during combat would often add this. In the process, they lost their innocence, their inner peace, and some of them have never fully recovered it. 
On the battlefield, some veterans have lost friends and comrades. Some soldiers lost their lives, and their parents lost their sons and daughters to war. Other veterans were severely wounded and have lost their mobility or some function of their body. The cost of military service is often greater than any soldier expects. Many of our vets have given a full measure of their youth and their health in defense of this country. And in that respect, I would argue all have given a full measure of their lives. Jeff Shira wrote the book, The Last Full Measure. It's a historical novel that reflects on the last two years of the, of the battles in the Civil War, with Grant as a commanding general of the Union armies and Lee as a commanding general of the Confederates. In the closing days of the war, the reader is left with a very clear sense of the hopeless last gasp condition of the Lee's Confederate army in April 1865. Racing across the fields of Virginia, starving, poorly equipped, no shoes, attempting against all odds to live for one more day. Soldiers and officers alike on both sides gave a full measure of themselves, marching and fighting day after day. In his book, Shara leaves the reader with an understanding that war demands the last full measure from everyone who serves in combat. In fact, the last full measure, any man or woman who enlists or who is drafted in the armed forces must confront in their own minds a recognition that may be called upon for them as well. A few years ago, Mary Jane and I watched the movie Hacksaw Ridge, which follows the true life story of a conscientious objector named Desmond Doss, who was willing to serve the, the military. But as a devout Seventh Day Adventist, Doss was unwilling to take up arms to kill others. The full measure of his identity was challenged in the Marine Corps in boot camp as officers taunted him and enlisted men beat him up because of his conscientious objector convictions. Despite making his life absolutely miserable, enduring beatings and physical abuse, psychological abuse, he refused to take up arms, but he also refused to drop out of the Marines. Slowly, he earned the respect of his platoon and was assigned and trained for the role of medic. His division of Marines was sent into combat at Okinawa and engaged in heavy battle on Hacksaw Ridge. Wave after wave of suicidal attacks by the fierce Japanese army left many U.S. Marines on the ridge dead or dying, wounded all day long under the cover of withering fire. Doss patched up men and sent them over the ridge on stretchers to a mass unit below on the beach. As night approached, Doss's unit retreated back down the cliff to safety before making another assault the next day. Doss heard Marines wounded and crying for help on top of the ridge and he made the conscious decision to stay up there alone, unarmed, as long as there was a wounded, <coughs> wounded Marine left there that night, he was there as well. All night long, alone, Facing enemy sniper fire, he triaged wounded Marines and lowered dozens of them by himself using ropes that cut into his hands in the morning they were but bloody pulps. And he did this risking death throughout the entire night. Doss was prepared to die the next morning after he had been wounded and then the Marines showed back up, and they sent him down the side to the mass unit. Doss saved dozens of men from certain death that night, risking his own life all night long, 
willing to give the last full measure of his life in the way he felt comfortable and honorable to do. And he was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor and won the deep respect and admiration of everyone in that entire division for his selflessness and his bravery on that mountain alone. He risked giving the last full measure of a lot his, his life facing his fears, and he did alone. Men and women who serve this country with honor and with dedication offer a full measure of their lives every day. And some, like Dawes, risk the last full measure to tell their story. There are men from this congregation, some from us today, with us today, who have willingly risked the last full measure of their well-being to serve their country and the well-being of fellow soldiers and selfless devotion to others. Surviving some years in a POW camp, triaging wounded soldiers on the field of battle, flying helicopters into a combat fire zone to rescue troops, serving as a ranger behind enemy lines, serving in the jungles of Vietnam and the mountains of Korea, leading house-to-house -house reconnaissance in the streets of Fallujah, Iraq, and the villages of Afghanistan. Members of this church, Men and women of this nation go to train and serve for our defense. They fight and sometimes die. And oftentimes the survivors of the battles carry their own scars with them for the rest of their lives. Others carry the spiritual guilt of actions that took on the heat that in the heat of warfare. Every one of our combat veterans has risked the last full measure of their lives in defense of this country for us. Many can echo the thoughts of one Afghan vet who wrote to his cousin in this church, I'm afraid I'll never be able to be forgiven of the things I have done for the rest of my life. And to them we say, Christ has forgiven you. We love you. We honor you. And we pray for you. And we pray for your inner peace. And most of them knew at the time that they were just doing their duty, giving their two cents worth for the well-being of this nation. Just like the widow giving that what little she had to give. On this day, we honor the brave men and women who accepted for us the call to wear the uniform of the United States. When I was a child, many of my friends were, like me, children of World War II vets. As a pastor, I've personally known many vets, and I've heard privately numerous accounts, including a survivor of D-Day, one of the Battle of the Bulge, one of North Africa and the Italian Campaign, I was a pastor and friend of a survivor of the Bataan Death March and of a Navy captain at Guadalcanal. And I was a teenage friend of the son of Thomas Ferby, who was a bombardier in the Enola Gay. I once spent a night as a pastor with a wife and son who feared for their own lives and the life of their husband and father, who was reliving flashbacks in his bedroom of the horror of the battle he saw in Korea. That night, Paul ended up in a locked hospital ward with a straitjacket until the medications took effect. And his family, like so many families, continued to pay the full measure of the cost of war with him. As a young man, I worked beside friends who were a few years older than I, who served in Vietnam. One was a language interpreter, knew Vietnamese well. Some were combat vets, and one was a dear friend who served in the Navy on a patrol boat in the Mekong Delta. I administered the men who flew combat missions in Desert Storm. 
I have known others who were more recent vets after 9-11. Regardless of the war, two things are commonly held by all. The first is, whether they be male or female, all of them who face combat or even during training put their lives on the line and were called upon to give the full measure of who they were even beyond their what they knew as their physical limitations. That's a con constant for every vet of foreign wars. But there is a second constant I've learned over the years from our veterans, and that is I've never known a vet who, having seen the horrors of war, did not pray for, long for, or work for peace lasting peace, like the peace that Christ lived and died for in the face of ancient Roman military occupation. Christ, more than the widow in the gospel story, gave the last full measure of his life, and in his resurrection shows us the power of God's love to bring resurrection life into a war-torn world Christ alone offers a full measure of life that is everlasting and a peace that endures. That is what we and what all vets long for, the promise of lasting peace. And on this Veterans Day in all days, we thank God, first for the contributions of our vets, and we thank God for the promise of everlasting peace revealed only in Christ, especially when we see the acts of senseless violence acted out in our nation's businesses and schools and gathering places. Lord, hear our prayers for lasting peace, and thank you for the sacrifices of the sons and daughters of this congregation and of every community across this nation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Prince of Peace, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to stand and join with me as we affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. In gratitude to God for the gift of life and the promise of peace, we offer our gifts of gratitude.
the full measure of who we are in service to you and your role and rule in this world. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace, power, and peace of our risen Lord be and abide with us all now and forever. 